I'm afraid I'm going to repeat some of the things that uh, Ms. Woodruff has already said, but they're worth repeating. Mort Mandel asked me to convey to all of you how thrilled he is to have been chosen to receive the Carnegie Medal of Philanthropy and how sorry he is that for medical reasons he cannot be with us here today. However, Mort's absence today gives me the opportunity to say something about him which he would be reluctant to share. Like many people of his generation, Mort climbed out of the depression in a lower middle class household that was essentially run by his mother. While the three boys and girl helped with money they earned after school and on weekends. His mother was a door-to-door -door saleswoman of knickknacks. His father became ill at a young age and died at 57. During World War II, Mort enlisted in the Army, where he imbibed lessons that he applied to his businesses and philanthropy all of his life. For example, he observed and absorbed ideas about discipline, order, and above all, the importance of written instructions. His military experience is the origin of his emphasis on fact books and policies. Frugality remained part of his DNA. Until late in life, he bought economy class on planes and used frequent flyer miles to get upgrades to business class. No matter how hard I tried to persuade him to fly to Israel in more comfortable seating or to buy United Airlines when it was in trouble, <laughs> he resisted. Mort and his brothers contributed over a billion dollars to causes in the United States and Israel. But Mort has never indulged in the purchase of a yacht or a plane. Don't misunderstand me. Mort and Barbara lived well in beautiful, art-filled homes, but they never flaunted their wealth. Mort is what I would call the ultimate thoughtful and strategic philanthropist, and he's always happy to learn from mistakes. He often relates the story that in 1953, when he and his brothers felt that they were, quote, rich, which for them meant that they could pay their bills and support their mother, they created a charitable foundation. Jack, Joe, and Mort did everything together with only occasional friction. I learned an Arabic saying from Vartan that goes like this. If having a brother was such a good thing, God would have created one for himself. Well, God had not met the Mandel brothers. <laughs> Mort's philosophy can best be summarized by two of his sayings that he repeats in interviews, other writings, and in his book. It's all about who. One, the hallmark of our philanthropy is our commitment to invest in people who have the values, ability, and passion to change the world. And second, it's all about leadership. It's all about who. It's all about strategy. It's all about execution and it's all about setting a high bar. Mort never stopped thinking and talking about how to achieve his lofty goals. He didn't complete his BA at a time when most of us do or did, but constant learning has been important to him all of his life. He finally received his BA when he was 92, but not before he was subjected to an exam by three science faculty at Case Western Reserve University 75 years after he began his BA. You can define a person by the purposes which he or she directs his, her, his or her philanthropy. The mission statement for the Jack, Joseph, and Morton Mandel Foundation, which was written by Mort, says it all. The statement begins, to contribute to the flourishing of the United States and Israel as just, inclusive, compassionate, and democratic societies and to improve the quality of life of all citizens in both countries. I believe Andrew Carnegie would approve. Thank you very much.